I want to say thanks to everyone gathered here at the March of the Living uh, Gala for the warm welcome. But I do want to begin by saying a few words about my dear friend Nate, who has so bravely shared his story with countless Canadians. He, along with other Holocaust survivors, many of whom are in the room tonight, have brought one of history's darkest chapters to life, reminding us of our shared responsibility to never let such hatred take root in our homes, our schools, or our communities. To Ellie Rubenstein and the organizers of tonight's event, National Chair Heshi Altbaum, Toronto Chair Marcy Abramsky, and Dinner Chairs Ruth Eckstein, Tammy Gleed, and Jennifer Green, I'd like to thank you for all you do to support this important and tremendous initiative. And Tammy, as I did earlier, I want to publicly recognize the loss of your dad, Bill, our loss of Bill, and salute all he did to support Holocaust education. <laughs> to my friends, our MPs, Michael Levitt and Marco Mendicino, thank you for all that you do to promote and support this important initiative. Uh, Justice. Justice Rosia Bella, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being such a friend. Uh, and one other friend here I want to recognize in the audience for whom May 8th is also a special day. Uh, Erwin Kotler, where are you, Erwin? Erwin, yeah. It's Erwin's birthday today. Uh, Erwin has been a good friend for a long time and helped me uh, understand as I started out as a politician uh, what matters and what doesn't. And he still reminds me of that every time we see each other. <laughs> He's a true professor. I'm honored to be given the chance to share a few words with you on this meaningful evening. For the last 30 years, thousands of marchers have traveled to Poland to honor the memory of six million Jews who were brutally murdered by the Nazis, a tribute to both the survivors and the victims of the Holocaust, the March of the Living bears witness to the strength and resilience of the Jewish community from generation to generation. I want to again commend the incredible leadership and dedication of Eli Rubinstein, who has led this march since its inception in 1988. Through education and advocacy, he has reminded us of our collective responsibility as Jews and of friends of the Jewish community to ensure that never again is never forgotten. So thank you, Ellie, for all that you have done, especially in educating and inspiring our youth. Être avec vous aujourd'hui, à l'occasion du 30e anniversaire de la marche, me rappelle ma propre visite en Pologne durant laquelle j'ai visité Auschwitz en compagnie du rabbin Shire. C'est là que j'ai rencontré Nate Leipziger, dont l'expérience a rendu la mienne encore plus émouvante. Les souvenirs évoqués par Nate ont clairement mis en évidence non seulement le mal de l'Holocauste, mais également l'espoir face à une situation qui semblait insurmontable. Together, we stared at the barbed wire fences that once separated the victims from their captors. We marched along the railways that delivered so many Jews to their deaths. We laid our hands on the rail cars that took mothers, sisters, fathers, and sons away from their homes and away from each other, including Nate's family. Together, we cried by the crematorium for all the innocent lives cut short by hatred, intolerance, racism, and anti-Semitism. My visit to Auschwitz will forever stay with me and guide my time as Prime Minister, but also 
my being as a father, a husband, a son, a brother, and a citizen. The heartbreaking reality of the Holocaust is one that I have not lived. But hearing Nate's story and seeing the relics of this devastating chapter of history strengthened my resolve to carry on the legacy of those who perished. It was Elie Wiesel who said, when you listen to a witness, you become a witness. That day, I became a witness to Nate the same way thousands of marchers became witnesses to both the survivors and the victims of the Holocaust every year for the past 30 years. Le Holocaust nous a appris le pouvoir meurtrier du silence. Les conséquences dévastatrices de l'inaction ont mis en lumière la culpabilité de ceux qui sont restés sans voix face à l'injustice, à la discrimination et au racisme. Contrer la haine, l'intolérance et l'antisémitisme à chaque instant, dans toutes ses formes, ce n'est pas seulement la responsabilité des gouvernements ou des membres d'une même communauté religieuse, c'est une responsabilité partagée qui requiert les efforts et l'engagement de tous les membres de la société, peu importe leurs croyances, leurs origines ou leur âge. En tant que citoyens, nous avons tous le devoir de rappeler les histoires de ces femmes et de ces hommes innocents dont la vie a été volée et ainsi veillée à ce que de telles atrocités ne se répètent jamais. Encore aujourd'hui, d'après les chiffres les plus récents, 17 percent de tous les crimes haineux au Canada visent des Juifs. Je regrette de dire que les Juifs sont victimes de crimes haineux plus que tout autre groupe religieux. Il faut donc faire plus en tant que société pour mettre fin aux attitudes xénophobes et antisémitiques qui résident dans nos communautés, dans nos écoles et dans mon, nos milieux de travail. According to the most recent figures, 17% of all hate crimes in Canada target Jewish people. And it pains me to say that Jewish Canadians more than any other religious, Jewish people more than any other religious groups are victims of hate crimes. We need to do more as a society to end xenophobic and anti-Semitic attitudes that still take root in our communities, our schools, and in our places of work. One of the things I find so inspiring about the march is its commitment to education, which permeates everything you do. When I learned that you would be announcing scholarships that bear the names of survivors, I couldn't help but think that there is truly no better tribute to their legacy. After all, education and knowledge is our most powerful tool against the ignorance and hatred that fueled the Holocaust. And I am proud to say that our government shares your commitment to the importance of Holocaust education I would like to recognize the countless contributions the survivors and their families have made to the Jewish community, but also, and essentially, to our national fabric. I stand here on May 8th in Canada's inaugural marking of Jewish Heritage Month which was recently passed in the House of Commons. But as a country, we must learn from our successes in tandem with our failures. Between 1933 and 1945, the Canadian government only accepted around 5,000 Jewish refugees due to our discriminatory none is too many, immigration policy of the time. The most 
egregious example of this misguided policy happened in 1939, when Canada turned away the MS St. Louis. The Canadian government infamously turned its back on 907 German Jews who were fleeing persecution. Forced to return to Europe, 254 were eventually killed in the Holocaust. We cannot turn away from this uncomfortable truth about ourselves and about our country and of Canada's part in it. We must learn from this story, remember this story, and let its lessons guide our actions going forward. And that is why I am proud to announce tonight that the Government of Canada will issue a formal apology in Parliament over the fate of the MS St. Louis and its passengers. C'est pourquoi je suis fier d'annoncer que le gouvernement du Canada présentera des excuses officielles pour ce qui est arrivé au MS St. Louis et à ses passagers. Quand nous avons cruellement refusé l'entrée du navire au Canada, nous avons laissé tomber non seulement les passagers, mais aussi leurs descendants et notre communauté. Nous n'avons pas su leur démontrer la gentillesse et la compassion qu'ils méritaient. Now, an apology in the House of Commons will not rewrite this shameful chapter of our history. It will not bring back those who perished or repair the lives shattered by tragedy. But it is our hope that this long overdue apology will bring awareness to our failings as we vow to never let history repeat itself. I look forward to offering this apology on the floor of the House. Once again, thank you all for all you do in this, the March of the Living Gala, but all you do every day to contribute to the strength of your community, but mostly to contribute every day to the strength of this extraordinary country. Merci, mes amis. Thank you.